It's uh, about 8 o'clock in the morning, about 35 degrees out here, and we're going to get to work on this thing. The customer says it's been making a lot more noise when he turns on the blades, uh, so I suspect we have a deck problem. Let me show you, see if we can hear it. can hear it. Let's work on taking this deck off here. I think the first thing I'll do is lower it all the way just so I can see all the brackets. It's as far as it'll go. Let's get under here and see what we have. We have uh, the quick release cotter pin there and we also have a cotter pin here. Take that bracket off and it looks like we have one up front there as well. Zoink. Nope, no washer. And that just pushes right out. Zoink. Don't lose that washer. And I might just be able to pull it right off. Oh, yep, there we go. That bracket's released. Go ahead and get up to this cotter pin here. Come on. Zoink. There we go. See if I can pull this bracket off. Yep. Oop. Well, there was a washer on there. I found it. And it looks like if we just pull on this belt real hard, um, we can get it off the pulley here without too much trouble. Just like that. I'm normally not a real big fan of John Deere residential products, but uh, this deck comes off pretty easy. That's nice. That's not the right pin. I'll have to replace that one. Don't want to lose the washer this time. Zoinks. It's there somewhere. This one's real easy to get to. Right in front of the tire here. Good pull. Give it a good pull here. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. I must have forgot to disconnect that side. Yeah, that one was just stuck up there. I think we can pull this thing out now. Let's give it a try. And see if I can pull this baby out of here. Looks like that thing comes right off. Must be stuck on a bracket on the other side here. Yeah, this one on the other side was binding things up. So there's a couple ways we can go about this. First, let's just uh, try and see what kind of condition the bearings are in here. What I'm going to do is wiggle the blades and see if I have any play in there. Not much play in that one. Hear that? That bearing's bad. Let's check this one out. That one's bad too. Might as well replace all three at this point. That's where all that noise is coming from. 
So I can see I'm going to have to take off the, uh, the belt guards here on both sides. With John Deere equipment, you never know if it's going to be American standard nuts and bolts or metric. Turns out uh, we're dealing with metric today, so that's a 10 millimeter there. Much easier than hand cranking them with a wrench. Got to get yourself one of these, folks. Clean this out. This is the kind of stuff that causes rust after a long period of time if you don't clean it out. That dirt just sits in there and stays wet, causes rust. And if you approach it, what do we have here? The little family coming out for the day. Anyways, so here's the top. You can also wiggle the pulleys from up here and listen for that uh, for a bad bearing. That one's pretty tight. That's the bad one. That's a bad one too. So it'll be a good idea to lube up all the nuts and bolts that we're going to take off. I don't know if we're going to take that one off, but I'll lube it. It probably needs it. And you definitely want to put some penetrating lubricant on the blade nuts. On a lot of lawnmowers deck, you'll have one of these pulleys that moves. <clears throat> this one is uh, on a spring tension, so it keeps the belt tight. I'm going to go ahead and lube up the pivot point on the back side here. And you can see that uh, pivot point right there. Give these a little bit of action here. These are usually the ones that are really hard to get off. If they come off easy, consider yourself less. So I'm hoping we can replace just the bearings in here and not uh, the whole housing. Sometimes you'll have to purchase this whole housing and not just the, the inner bearings. And it's a 24 millimeter to take off the, uh, the blade nut. I'm going to try and do this the easy way and use one of these. If you don't have an air hammer, use the uh, biggest wrench you have. All right, let's see if we get lucky. Careful. Try and hold this blade here without hurting myself. Very nice. One down. So all three of these blades are the same size, so you don't have to worry about uh, getting them mixed up. If you don't have one of these, you have to use a wrench um, to hold on the other side up by the pulley. And that's what I have this for in case one of these sticks and doesn't come off. I'll have to uh, crank on it from the other side too. Well, these came off pretty easy. Usually I'm not that lucky. But every dog has his day. So there's no damage to the uh, shafts, at least uh, on the outside. What's this guy doing? Oh, that's my gener uh, air compressor blowing. It looks like the top nut here is a 22 millimeter. Uh, hopefully I can get it off with this. It's gonna spin, but yeah. See, if you don't have one of these um, air impact drills, then you're gonna have to hold this shaft, probably put the blade back on, um, 
to take these off. You might even, probably a good idea to take these pulleys off first before you take the blades off in retrospect. These pulleys are all the same too. It's a lot harder if you don't have an impact wrench. Let me tell you. Okay, so I can see how to get these off. That's how you do it. But I don't want to damage the threads, so I'm going to put that back on. There we go. That's your little adapter you have here. Okay, so that's what you have when you take the adapter off. You can see the bearing down in there. A little tap with the rubber mallet here. Oh, don't even need to do it. <clears throat> okay, so this is what we have as far as the shaft goes. Um, it looks like everything is in good shape on this shaft. Oh, that's, that's what it does. Okay, so that's how it goes. So we have our bearing here, and you can see our bearing here. So I'll show you how to take these out. So if you look real close, you can see uh, down in there, between the bearings, there's a spacer. You see it moving around in there, hopefully. So these are the tools I'm going to use to um, hammer these bearings out of here. Uh, the trick is, is you just want to be careful when you're pounding that you don't damage this um, outer housing because it's made out of aluminum usually and real easy to break. So when you put your uh, bar or your punch down in here, just make sure you get it past that spacer and you sit it on that bearing just taps right out. You see how easy that came out? There it is. You can see with this bearing it still spins but um, the inner race is loose in there so that's no good. And now we do the same thing to the underside. Sometimes they're hard to get out and I kind of go back and forth. I don't just hit on the same spot. There it is. We do have the same bearings top and bottom, probably on all three, so that's good. It looks like we'll just have to get six of these bearings. There we go. One more to go. There we go. So check out that bearing. I don't know if that came apart um, from me hammering it out of there or if that just was the condition of it. Not good. So I cleaned off the bearing and I found a part number there. Uh, so let's see if I can get six of those. Morning everyone. It's three days later. It's about 38 degrees. Kind of wet. Not a real good day to work on lawn mowers, but uh, someone's got to do it. So I have a whole handful of new ball bearings here, and we're ready to go back on. And I think I better put on some real shoes before I do this. I'm going to try not to get wet and muddy. It's a good idea to put some sandpaper to these shafts if they're rusted up at all. Uh, it helps getting the, uh, the bearing on a lot easier. Put the spacers back on. And here's a new um, bearing here, and uh, it's nice when they go on like this. A lot less trouble, that's for sure. Sometimes you have to work them on. And something else you'll want to check with these shafts too, is that the, uh, the octagon up here uh, isn't all worn down because that's where the pulley sits. Let me get the uh, dog turd out of the shot first. So 
So if you look down in here, you'll see that uh, there's a lot of grease. It's a good idea to fill these up with grease. It just helps with um, corrosion in the future. Helps keep some of the water out of there. Hopefully everything will go smoothly here. So you'll just want to make sure that's all smoothed out in there. And here's our shaft with the bearing and spacer already in place. Might just be able to hammer it in place that way. There we go. So then we'll move around to the front and let me get some grease to put in there. I mean, you can fill them up with grease if you want, but I don't think they need that much. I'm gonna pull it out. Bearing stayed in place, that's good. Lube up the shaft here. So these blades were in pretty good shape. I put a little sharpen on them, but uh, they were out here overnight. So as you can see, they've already gotten rusty, but that's all right, they're still sharp. You can see which way the, the slant goes and the fins here. Uh, that's the side you want up, right? Not the bottom side, but the side that has the edge on it here. This is the side you want up. So on the uh, pulley nut, so on that pulley nut, uh, the 7 8 works also. And that's what I'll use to hold it while I tighten the blade nut. Just make sure everything is in place and on the, uh, on the star here and on the octagon here for the pulley side. So that one's tight. Don't forget the spacer. That goes between the bearings. That won't wiggle back and forth now, so get this pulley on, call it good. And for the second one, it goes in nicely. And your spacer here, don't forget that. I know I've said that a few times, but it's because I always forget it. And then the bearing. And I think this bearing I'm going to put in place with just a big socket here. As long as it is not tapping on the black rubber on the seal or the bearing. You can hear it when it gets seated, it starts making a different noise. And this spacer, which goes like this. This guy can be a little stinker getting on, I've noticed. Getting it over that octagon part. Don't really seem to want to go on. For some reason it doesn't want to go down, but it will. all the way on and you can see the octagon and now you can see the octagon portion appear so we can put the pulley on and the star pattern here is good the star pattern on the shaft is good so these blades are going on easy. All right, one more to go. 
put this guy into place. Oops. spacer over the shaft. I've already lubed up these holes with grease as you can see. Put the bearing in, <clears throat> tap it in if it needs it. You don't want to hit on it too hard. making that uh, much sharper noise with when I hit it and that's how you know it's seated the spacer these things have been a little bugger to get on they'll go on yeah this is the best way to get them on is just to tap them into place it looks like can you all see what I'm doing there Hopefully. And I'm, I'm pushing up uh, on the blade as I'm hammering. All right, won't wiggle anymore back or forth so we're ready and we can see the octagon poking out. Okay, I'm just going to go around and make sure all these are tightened up and then I think we're ready to go back on as soon as I figure out where this goes. Hopefully I didn't rush through that too much. It's pretty wet out here so I wanted to get it done. But as you can see, no more play. And I think I finally figured out where that bracket goes. There's a broken uh, bolt down in there I'm gonna have to figure out how to get out or drill a new hole somewhere in that area oh man you guys remember how this belt went on there this might take me a while to figure out ten minutes later so I finally figured out how this belt goes on here it took me about ten minutes I actually had to rewatch my video but that's how the belt goes on, just like that, folks. So, I just need to mount up this keeper and put the belt guards back on, and we're ready to go to. Let's see if this will work. Might have to use a nut and bolt. Oh, this will work. I can cinch it down. Ah, yeah. All right. Okay. Wish me luck, folks. Ooh. All right. So all you have to do with this, as you can see, is just Put it in like that, and then rotate it. Looks like I lift up the deck a little bit. There we go. Washer back on there. That one's on. I think I'll do the other side. I've already attached uh, both brackets on the other side. <clears throat> Don't forget that one there. There we go. There we go. 
Now I just need to put this one on. There we go. I'll put the clip on the other side and put the belt on. I have that guy on. I just need to stretch this belt back in place. Oh, I'm gonna have to put, I'll have to put the camera down to do this. But basically you just stretch the belt on. And there we go. Everything turns and is looking good. Oops, looks like I forgot to put these belt covers on. Yeah, this deck was easy to work on. Good job, John Deere. You won't hear me say that very often. Man, I'm bleeding all over the place. Okay, let's test it out. It was making a lot more noise on the lower RPMs, so we'll make sure to uh, listen to that. Well, I think that was a, uh, quite a bit quieter. It's now, um, I don't really hear any abnormal noises. So I think we're good, folks.